you spent a lot of time in the library where you could have been out on the street gang banging, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it helped that there was one place where I can go, not be using drugs, not be shooting people or getting shot at. Back when he was an 11-year-old gang member, Luis Javier Rodriguez never dreamed that one day his own books would be included in the stacks of L.A. Central Library. Those are, it's a short story collection, The Republic of East L.A., and my novel, Music of the Mill. Did you ever think you'd have some books in the public library? I never imagined that I would have books here. I come here so often. Today, his books are shelved among the same authors Luis himself admired. And, and of course, here's Elmore Leonard. And perhaps, like a novel with an improbable ending, the mayor selected Luis as the Poet Laureate of Los Angeles, chosen in part for his eloquence with words. The calling came to me while I languished in my room. And in part for a life shaped by the city's gritty streets. While I withered away my youth in jail cells and damp body fields, it brought me to life out of captivity. Luis wrote The Calling from a jail cell at age 16. Then it came, The Calling. It brought me out of my room. It forced me to escape night captures in street prisons. It called me from the shadows, out of the wreckage of my barrio. I waited all of 16 years for this time. Somehow unexpected, I was called. Luis was arrested and locked up for protesting the Vietnam War. What happened in the course of all this, they picked up about five of us and were gonna charge us with the murders of the people that died during the rioting. There was three people. And uh, we were under 18, but we ended up in the Hall of Justice Jail, which is an over 18 jail, and we were in Murders Row. Murders Row was one section where they had all the murders. When I was there, it was all black and brown except for one white guy, and that was Charles Manson. It was in that cell that Luis experienced a literal rite of passage. And I started to write, and that became the basis for some of my first early poems. The Calling was one of those. But basically, um, I'm being called to live a different life. A different life at that point for Luis meant a complete U-turn, turning his experiences into words. I learned to do that because in the gang, I did heroin, I did a lot of drugs, I shot people, I also stabbed people. I, uh, thank God I never killed nobody. But I, if you go through that, then you gotta learn how to make a good life out of that material. Out of that material, Luis wrote a best-selling memoir, Always Running, La Vida Loca, the New York Times called it vivid, raw, and fearless. It won the Carl Sandburg Literary Award. His other works, 15 books in all, won him an Hispanic Heritage Award for Literature for revealing life as a Latino in L.A. Piece by piece, they tear at you, peeling away layers of being. In the squalor of their eyes, you are an outlaw. Say you won't succumb. Say you won't believe them when they rename you. Here you are not a conquered race, perpetual victim. Use these weapons against them. Use your given gifts. Luis came to realize his given gift was words. Words saved my life. Books saved my life. Poetry in one form or the other saved my life. Even though I was a homie, I was down for everything, I was the weird homie. I, I was the one that loved to read books. I was the one that liked to sit there and, and write on my little notepad. I was the weird homie but he ignored the taunts and traded the streets for the stacks. I was actually in this library and I was homeless and um, this was my refuge during the day. And I would go and read books. It got my imagination afire, you know what I'm saying? My creative furnaces were being lit up and it was powerful for me because then somewhere along the line, I imagined maybe I could do this. And he could, and then he did more. This is Tia Chucha's, the Silmar Bookstore and Cultural Center Luis founded. It's a place for young people to hang out, a space Luis never had. Hey, everybody. Come on in. There is an open door policy at Tia Chucha's, where books are used as building blocks to lift at-risk youth up from the barrio. We can just sit right here. We serve 15,000 people a year, all ages. We have a youth group called Young Warriors that works directly with the most troubled kids. I know that many of them have changed people's lives. One of those young warriors is 24-year-old Myra Zaragoza, who's been guided by Luis since she was 15. My life ha has changed completely, has transformed after I was mentored by him. Thanks to him believing in me, 
I started believing in myself and I am the person I am today. Had you not met him, where would you think you'd be? Probably would have never gone to college, probably would have just thought working and helping my, my family survive would have been the life for me. These are the hills where I first met your mom. What Luis was able to do for countless other kids, he was unable to do for his own. Ramiro is Luis's eldest son, who followed his father's earlier footsteps down a perilous path. I was in jail for 13 and a half years for attempted murders. Even though son had little contact with father in his youth, you could call it poetic that Ramiro discovered a love of words was in his blood. Even when I was in the street, gang banging, doing whatever, I always had a little notebook with me and I always wrote and my guys knew it. Sometimes they'll make fun of me, but I really think that that was the best way for me to express, you know, just my struggles, you know, and from there, with that energy, even though I, yes, I went to prison and yes, I did a lot of crazy things, I'm still alive and I think I owe that lots of poetry. At 39 years old, Ramiro found his way back on track. His father able to pave the way. I've seen, you know, whatever he's gone through in his life, he has been able to change, and so I know that I'm able to do the same thing. So what are you writing, Mijo? As LA's poet laureate, Luis knows the words from his keyboard will be amplified and hopes to inspire young Angelinos with a love of language and perhaps encourage those who've gone astray to execute a rewrite. I think it can save your life. I think it's a kind of energy that when you get into it, the language, the words, the imagery, the storytelling behind it, you can't help but feel that you have a life that has meaning and direction. There are a few duties that come with the job. One is to compose poems about Los Angeles. I love LA. I can't forget its smells. The world's most mixed metropolis of intolerance and divisions. How I love it, how I hate it. City of hungers, city of angers, car fumes and oil derricks, water thievery with every industry possible and still a one industry town lined by those majestic palm trees and like its people with solid roots supple trunks, resilient. I'm Jennifer Sabi for SoCal Connected. To learn more about Luis Rodriguez, go to socalconnected.org slash Luis Rodriguez.